so this is the first day of my proper true Australian adventure last morning I'm just dotting the I's crossing the T's going to the post office sending this bad boy home gonna get a new sim hopefully it's gonna work now Try to get one before but my found out my phone was unlocked phone my phone company and I got them to unlock it so fingers crossed I should be all good but yeah I gotta get out out of the apartments by 10 then go off to pick up my car and then get in out of here and then drive in to oh that's a nice mess and then drive into Warrnambool six hours away Woo. Oh, I'm so looking forward. This is going to be epic. Right. Post is going back, but my God. The post office over here, they've got iPads and like brand new um, iMacs in store to use, like for like information, you want to find stuff out. They've got iPads, They've, it's like Apple branded. <clears throat> Alright, well that's my sim done. Now back to the apartment. Breakfast, bags. And let's get this show on the road. Oh. Alright, this is the Hayes chocolate shop. I'm not going to buy anything. I'm just... um. In, in and out, just to say, been in the Hayes chocolate shop. <laughs> First major fail of the day instead of going to the airport, I came to the local uh, car rental place where I rented the car from, and I thought I was going to get picked up at the airport and brought here, so I thought I would. Come here early? No, I have to go to the airport. Well, I've picked up my car. Free upgrade. It's huge. I have a Toyota Cabra. Um, I was really looking forward to my little Suzuki Swift. I'm much more comfortable driving small cars. That's what I learned in. Uh, my parents had a little Dave Matiz. Loved it. Um, they had a Mini for a little while, so I drove that around. Yeah, big cars, mm, they unnerve me just a little bit, only because I'm not used to driving in them. First stop, Warren Ball. Right, I'm on my way to Warren Ball. Don't worry, I'm not looking at my phone. I've stuck it with my gecko gum onto my steering wheel bit of a nightmare I was driving out I got the GPS on and it took about half an hour for it to find its GPS I thought they'd give me a dud one not good so lucky that I bought a sim this morning I was using that until the GPS was found but now woo, on the road already the landscape has changed so much but you know that's just from been in the city and now getting out into the countryside like oh this is awesome so yeah I feel a lot more comfortable in the car now I've got the seat as high up as possible it always freaks me out not seeing where the front of the car ends or what or, or starts I guess I should say being in the front it's automatic but they like they have the like the normal drive feature but they've got this weird like it is a clutch but you press it and it like clicks into place and then you press it again and then it deselects weird I did not get the hang of it she told me and I just went yeah okay cool that sounds fun but now yeah getting the hang of it I feel comfortable it's all good Like, this is awesome. Oh. I think I have literally like, I don't know, well, six and a half hours to go. 
It's a long drive. I've just found cruise control. <laughs> Right, I'm just taking a little, what was that? Taking a little rest. Oof, that flies. Yeah, I've been going for a couple of hours. Um, yeah, I saw a sign saying rest area, rest area, rest area, reserve area, survive, something like that. I don't know. So I'm taking it. It's like I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. Like, no way. This is sick. I'm having so much fun. I'm, I'm, I do wish I was doing it with someone, like with a friend, with a mate, or someone else in the car. Because that would have been, oh, that would have been wicked. Um, yeah, gutted. But in hindsight, yeah, I never knew. I guess yeah. This is this is going to be my longest day, just by myself. But like so far, so good. So anyway, I'm going to chow down. Got my water. Got my hummus. Got some brown rice crackers. Yeah, I'm just going to take like a 10, 15 minute break. I need a piece as well. Right, I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> there is literally. Nothing around here. There she is. Oh, I should call her. I was going to call her Silver because she is Silver, but we had one of the dancers was called Silver. Like his name's Silvano. He's, he's Italian, but we nicknamed Nate, we nicknamed him Silver when we met him a couple of years ago back at Limebourne because we couldn't remember Silvano. I don't know. Terrible. So yeah, I don't know. I've got a long drive. I'm sure I can come up with a name. There is nothing around here. Except a straight road. For the next 97 kilometers. I've made a little dent into my journey. I'm coming up to 328 kilometers to go. I think I've done about, I think I've done over 300. Definitely over halfway there. Uh, this is the longest drive I have ever done. Like now it's quite boring because it's, well, yeah, a little bit boring because the roads are so straight. There's hardly any deviation. And it's just so flat. Like I had a bump probably around 150k ago. And I got, I'm not gonna lie, I got a little bit excited. But it's just, it's just this. I mean, this is quite nice now, there's greenery. I've come into a, a wine valley. But I mean, that's it. I've got 40k going straight. I've been going straight for. I've been going straight for like 35 years. No. I've been going straight for about. Well, ever since I left Adelaide, it's just one straight ass road. But thank God for this cruise control. I didn't have it figured out at first. I was just pressing the buttons and I couldn't figure out how to set the, the set the set the speed. But I think now I have. Finally. Oh, plain sailing. Although I completely forgot to put sun lotion on, on my right arm. I don't want to get to the, I don't want to get to Wollongong like have one burnt right arm. What a dick. Okay, those guys in front, that is Chris Lowry. That is Chris Lowry. He is, he was a singer. Uh, he's driving this with his sister. He's doing the Great Ocean Road. I saw this car speeding up to me. 
quite a way back. And I thought, shit, he's going fast. And then he, he slowed down behind me, overtook me. And I just saw his silhouette of him and went, oh, it's that Chris. He is racing off. Yeah, he overtook me and I thought, no, that can't be. I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. I've been driving for just over four hours now. That's nuts. Yeah, then I caught up to him again. And then he, he went to the other side of the road. So, so on like the wrong side. And I overtook, well, and yeah, I undertook him. And I tried to look in. And I thought, I was like, that's definitely him with his sister. And then they overtook me again and waved. That's funny as. But they are, look, I'm doing a good moderate speed of 115k. But they are just going off. Right, let's see if uh, they stop at the next stop. Because I need a break. It was Chris. They stopped off to get some petrol and I looked down and I was like, yo, oh, I'm half empty. I'm a half full kind of guy, but I was half empty on my tank. So I turned around and got some, uh, got some petrol <laughs> and it was them. That's bizarre. That's bizarre. In 500 meters, Shut up. Turn right. So yeah, they're going to stop off at um, the Blue Lake or Lake Blue at Mount Gambia. I mean, Mount Gambia is still quite a way away. Oh, but I'm turning. I'm turning. I'm going off the road. I'm actually turning right. Right. Street. right, here we go. Give way to absolutely nothing. Continue right. 100 kilometers. <laughs> 200 kilometers. Oh, that's to my destination. Oh, I might put in this blue lake then. Oh, I'll get to Mount Gambia, then I'll have a look. Something to do, eh? Of, uh, a lot of different trees like a lot of pine trees so it's nice nice that the landscape is changing from well it's changed from like dry barren nothingness wasteland to a bit more uh, rich vegetation still going strong 212k from Warrenbull. Now I hadn't planned to stop off anywhere today. I was just going to do this one massive epic trip to Warrenbull, get there, chill, and then uh, yeah, then just drive a bit more tomorrow to Apollo Bay. On to I think it's like Apollo Bay. I think to get there is like two, three, two and a half, two and a half to three hours. So I'm gonna leave quite early, check out the 12 Apostles, which now is only like nine and a half, 10, because they're, they're just corroding away. But yeah, see what time I get to Mount Gambia, which is very soon, I reckon. And check out this blue lake. Blue lake and they're following me. That's Chris and his sister. Look, stunning. Right, I'm gonna follow them all the way to Warren Ball. Just look at that. Guys, it's happening. I'm turning left. You don't understand Speed how check. happy. 117 meters ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm sliding now. 
to a good old 80k. That didn't last long. Go straight ahead for 70k. Made it to Warnbull. It's 10 o'clock. Oh, I got stuck behind a massive truck for what seemed like forever. It's probably about half an hour. I've just dropped my bags off at the uh, hostel, grabbed food at the only place. This is a skanky pizza. And the guy was closed. But I gave him a sob story that I just drove from Adelaide, which was true. That took me seven, eight hours. I am shattered. He gave me some food. And then I've only got a, oh, a couple of hours drive tomorrow. That was intense. That was the longest drive I've done in my life on my own. Oh, but it was awesome. Like now I understand how big Australia is. I think I drove seven. I need to check. Seven, seven hundred, nine hundred k. And that was actually it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I'm just tired now. A long day, so I'm gonna get food, get platted. Oh, make sure I know where I'm going tomorrow. I think tomorrow is a nice, easy day. It's just driving there, seeing the twelve apostles, um, and then checking out Apollo Bay. <laughs> 